Uh, and thanks, guys. Congratulations. You all deserve it. I've always been the biggest fan of the five, and uh, thank you all. Congratulations. Welcome to Prime Time. And welcome to Hannity tonight. And we are gearing up for a very busy news week for President Trump as he now approaches his 100th day in office. New Gingrich, Michelle Malkin, Monica Crowley, Geraldo Rivera, they'll all join us in a few minutes. But first, I want to start with the war on freedom of expression today in America and the attempts by liberal fascists to silence conservative voices. That is tonight's very important opening monologue. I have to start tonight by addressing a well-orchestrated effort by the intolerant left in this country that is designed to silence every conservative voice and by any means necessary. Now, I am speaking out tonight so that you, our audience, will understand what is really happening here and what is really at stake when it comes to freedom of speech in this country. Now, these tactics are right out of Saul Alinsky's Rule for Radicals playbook. Now, I've worked in radio for 30 years. I've been right here at the Fox News Channel for 21 and a half years. I'm very proud of that. And during this time, there's always been efforts and attempts to smear and slander and besmirch me and other conservatives. But it has never been as intense and completely insane as it is right now. Now, I want you to understand, every single minute, every single second, I am on the air, radio, TV, there's somebody likely being paid, recording and monitoring every single word that comes out of my mouth, all in the hopes that I may say something they can twist and distort and use against me and try and destroy my reputation, get my conservative voice off the air. Now, it's only gotten worse in the age of President Trump. Now, it's no secret I've been a supporter of the president and, of course, his policies. And quite simply, these liberal fascists, they can't stand conservative voices. Now, for those of you who don't know me well, I have a pretty thick skin. I call out people. I say things. I give my point of view four hours a day. And for all these years, well, there has been endless, unrelenting attacks against me. But now, in light of recent events, I have come to the conclusion I can no longer remain silent and I can no longer let the left slander against me slide. So from now on, and I want you to be informed of what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, if there's any person, any group, any organization, any media outlet that slanders, lies about me, besmirches me, my character, I'm going to be calling them out. Because at this point, enough is enough. I have hired a team of some of the best attorneys in this country to work with me and on my behalf. Now, the breaking point for me came this weekend when an individual who for over a decade has made the most outrageous, unfair, untrue allegations against me has now resurfaced by making ridiculous and completely untrue claims. Now, this person went on a radio show on Friday and made more unfounded accusations against me, which this person is now, interestingly, recanting after I made my statement, but it was only after I responded to these baseless and false smears. This is not the first time I've had to deal with this individual. Now, this person has repeatedly spread lies about me. I'll give you an example. Back in 2010, remember I was raising money for the Freedom Alliance, a charity that offers college scholarships to the children of killed veterans, severely injured veterans and their families. And in a blog post, the individual falsely accused me and members of the charity of skimming and stealing money that was donated. This, of course, was easily proven false. And in spite of the fact that we proved each and every single allegation to be untrue and inaccurate at the time, I was never given an apology. There was no correction that was issued. Now this person has made yet another slanderous accusation. And in response, I've released this statement, which now the press has picked up, and I'll read it for you. Let me be clear. The comments about me on a radio show this week by this individual are 100% false and a complete fabrication. This individual is a serial harasser who has been lying about me for well over a decade. The individual has a history of making provably false statements against me in an effort to slander, smear, besmirch my reputation. The individual has not just slandered me over the years, but also many people who this individual disagrees with. This individual desperately seeks attention by any means necessary, including making unfounded personal attacks and using indefensible and outrageous po political rhetoric. My patience with this individual is over. I have retained a team of some of the finest and toughest lawyers in the country who are now in the process of laying out the legal course of action we will be taking against this individual.
Now, in this fiercely divided and vindictive political climate, I will no longer allow slander and lies about me to go unchallenged, as I see this now to be a coordinated effort afoot to now silence those with conservative views. I will fight every single lie about me by any and all legal means available to me as an American. Now, I want you to know, my audience, to understand the importance of what is happening here. This is not about Sean Hannity. This is not about one person. There is now a coordinated attempt to silence the voice of every outspoken conservative in this country. If we don't stop it right now, there won't be any conservative voices on radio and television left. Now, I'm not the only one that these liberal fascists routinely target. Like me, conservatives are monitored on radio and TV every word they say. And contrary to the alt-radical left stated position, they're so open-minded liberals. Not true. Liberal fascism is alive and well in America today. Their goal is simple. They want to shut up, shut down, completely silence all conservative voices by any means necessary. Here's the difference. Unlike the left, I don't have any problem with what the other side says. If you want to listen to liberals on radio or TV, read their articles, follow them on social media, go for it. Now, I'll call them out for their bias. I'll explain why they're wrong. I'll debate them. But I'll never, ever say they should be silenced. And I won't support boycotts to attack their advertisers' a roundabout way of silencing them. So let me be clear tonight. Everyone who has publicly supported President Trump is a target. This is very political. We have seen repeatedly that the left knows no limits in these efforts. They have gone after and attacked the First Lady. They have attacked members of the president's family, every White House advisor. They've even attacked his daughter and his 10-year-old son. Now, ultimately, their goal is to cause as much collateral damage as they can to anybody that supports the president. They have tried to undermine the outcome of this election since November 9th. Please know this isn't about me. This is about the left concocting boycotts, all in an attempt to silence prominent conservative voices. If we don't take a stand now, if we allow this to happen now, I am telling you, America as we know it, freedom of speech as we know it, is over. Let's stop the boycotts. Let's stop si silencing opposition voices. Let all Americans make their own decisions. Joining us with Reaction, the author of the New York Times bestseller, Treason, former Speaker of the House, Fox News contributor, Newt Gingrich. You know, I first interviewed you, I think it was in 1990. That's the first time I'm in a, in a Holiday Inn in Decatur, Alabama. And you were giving a speech, and I was a local radio guy in, in Huntsville, Alabama. I've had a target on my back since I've, I've spoken out as a conservative. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this. And it, to me, there's a real threat to freedom of expression. Do you think I'm overstating this case, or, or maybe because it's affected me? No, no. Look, I think, first of all, the uh, left is in a rage. Uh, you, you saw that, by the way, the Democratic National Chairman's unbelievably vulgar comments over the weekend. Uh, these people are crazed. They're, they're, they're unhinged. Look at, look at Berkeley. Uh, look what happened at the college in Connecticut. Uh, you go around the country, the level of hostility, uh, the level of desire to shut us up, they are so shocked that they lost in November, and they can't believe it's because they are out of touch, because they're <laughs> dangerous, because their ideas are fantasies. Therefore, it's our fault. We're cheating somehow. And there's a war against Fox News for a practical reason. Fox News is the one place where you get reasonably accurate coverage of Donald J. Trump. If you're the New York Times or CBS News or the Washington Post, you would love to live in a world with no Fox News. And so there's a war, literally a war going on with money being raised to hire lawyers, to, to set up fights, to do investigations. So you're, you're a piece of that action. But you're also a piece of this much broader action that all across America, the fascist left has decided that they have to shut us up because we're winning the argument and we're, beginning, and we're winning elections and things ain't gone the way they thought they would. And I think this is a very dangerous time. I'm delighted that you counterattacked as directly as you did. I noticed that today that same individual withdrew the comments, said they weren't true, they were, they were inaccurate. Uh, and I think we're going to see a lot more of this. Anybody who's willing to stand up for Trump is a target. Anybody who's willing to stand up for conservatism is a target. You're willing to do both. 
You know, do you remember in 2010 when the IRS was used as a weapon against all these Tea Party and conservative groups? I remember I actually went sure. to your old hometown in Atlanta. You know, we had 20 plus thousand people show up at a rally outside. That was done by design. I actually sense the same strategy is being invoked. You're right. Fox News is the only place on television that I think President Trump gets fair coverage. Not, and, and I'm one of his supporters, but overall, the news division, he gets fair coverage. And talk radio, Rush, Mark, uh, Laura, Beck, and, and, and all of us, we've all been targeted at some point. And my question is, do you think this is done by design to shut down Fox or at least take away the, the heart and soul of it before, 20, before 2020? Look, absolutely. I think that there's a... The left thought they were going to win up to about 8 or 9 o'clock on election night. And they were sure that when Hillary replaced Obama, that they would then finish the job of wiping out conservatism in America. And they would impose their radical values. They would impose their bureaucrats. They would impose the laws they wanted. And they have been in a state of shock ever since 9 or 10 o'clock election night. Uh, and now they're, they're almost like they're in a total rage. And they've, they've decided that conservative media, conservative talk show host, Fox News in particular, are the enemy. That, that, if, that if you're allowed to continue to broadcast, if you're allowed to continue to reach out to millions of people, that they're never going to win again. And I think, frankly, they're right. Uh, and so this is an all-out effort with, with Hollywood liberals putting up millions of dollars, with George Soros putting up tens of millions of dollars. You see it all across the country, this desperate effort to organize, to politicize. I was at a university recently giving a speech. I had college Republicans tell me that they were genuinely frightened right after the election because if you smiled, people yelled at you because it was inappropriate to smile when Hillary Clinton lost. I mean, it's that kind of intimidation, and it can get that bad. All right, Mr. Speaker, stay right there. We are going to focus on the issues. We'll continue with Speaker Gingrich after the break. And coming up, Democrats now in full force trying to distort President Trump's accomplishments ahead of his 100th day in office. We will lay out the facts for you. We'll set the record straight. And also later tonight. And then you got their plan, which is let's have dirtier air, dirtier water. Less people with health insurance. Yeah, we want people to die. Dirty air, dirty water. Now, the nasty rhetoric from the left is nothing new. We'll explain how it has been a part of their playbook for years. And Michelle Malcolm will be here with reaction. That and more on this very busy news night, on this busy news week here on Hannity.